Hey everyone, John David here. And this is my latest monitor, the LG GN880. Now this is an ultra game monitor. I know this is more of a gaming focused monitor, but I bought it for productivity and casual gaming. And that too when I'm gonna buy an Xbox because currently I don't have time for gaming. I am just considering buying an Xbox, but I just still can't convince myself as much. And there is a reason why I actually bought this monitor. Now, if you open the box, you can actually find that thing in the first place, but I'm gonna show you something else first. Okay, there are tons of cables and all those things are provided. Most of them are like the, you know, charging brake, um, the power extended cables and all those stuff. There is an extension cable as well. Like it's for kind of like the monitor arm and that is the most beautiful thing. I'm gonna show you in a minute. Now this monitor doesn't come with an HDMI cable. It comes with only the, you know, display port cable. And this thing is actually the best thing, the ergo stand. Now I know a lot of people might not think this is the best stand, but I think this is the best stand you can buy. Or I mean, you can't buy. And this alone is actually pretty heavy. It weighs almost the same as the monitor itself, which is crazy. And boy, oh boy, this is the monitor. I mean, yeah, surely you can't really see it as much, but it's it, it just so light, it feels so light. I mean, boy, and it looks really gorgeous from the back. I know I'm not able to show you properly because I was so excited to just see it for myself. So you actually saw the monitor, right? I mean, this is actually one of my best purchases ever. Now, so let me start with the display size. So this is actually 27 inch, to be honest, and this is a 16 inch to nine monitor, you can see that. And this is the Quad HD panel. Now, there were actually a lot of monitors to buy when you look at this 27 inch 2K monitor range. But I specifically chose this one for only one big reason, because it is LG. And I trust LG because I've been using LG panels for a very long time, I know them. And the second thing was that because it's a gaming monitor as well as a productivity monitor, this sits really well with me. And the third thing that I wasn't looking at the first place, but and that is this ergo stand. And boy, oh boy, I don't have any other words to explain how great the Argus hand is of its own. This monitor arm alone should cost 100 to 100 bucks. So at 450, I think this is a steal of a deal. Like you're getting 2K resolution, a gaming monitor, which also can work as a productivity monitor, had nano IPS technology, which is another pro actually. So all in all, this is a fantastic monitor. I don't know why people are not talking about it. I mean, but this one, is the only one in the Ultra Gear series that has the Ergo stand. So that was one of the biggest reason why I actually went with this one. Now, here's the thing. One thing that I have to specifically say that even though I don't game on this monitor, not at all, because I don't have a gaming PC and I am not someone who doesn't have the time to play a game, which is another thing. And I am not so interested in games. That's, that's another thing. I have planned that one day I'm gonna buy an Xbox. I will convince myself to buy Xbox to play games. 2K high refreshed gaming are great. Now, there are monitors we will provide you like 240 Hz or something like that. This Alienware monitors, but they're also much more costly than this one. So, and on top of that, if you are buying an LG panel, then there are a few things you have to keep in mind. Now, you can get a 2K monitor, 27 inch monitor for much more, which is the 27 inch QN600 panel. Now, that monitor might sound on paper really good or very close to this one, even not, but that, that is not like a, a gaming monitor, I get it. The problem with that panel is that it is not a good panel. Now, I have this MK600 22 inch. It is something that I bought like long time back for to use with like an iPad and Samsung Galaxy Dex. 1080p monitor, 22 inch, it's fine. But that is a 600 series panel, good. It's an IPS panel, it's not a VA panel. But the problem is that the 600 panels have quite a bit of you know, build quality issues. Uh, the 600 series panel monitors have build quality issues. And the second thing would be that the IPS glow is quite a bit visible on those monitor, but on this monitor, I barely noticed it. So in that scenario, I would probably say that this is a freaking cool monitor. So if you're buying an LG monitor, to be honest, where I know best, you have few different options. So five, first and foremost thing would be a 500 series panel. Like let's say the name could be GV550 or 32 inch G, GN550, it could be anything. But the 550 alone or the 500 series alone makes it the worst LG panel ever. Now, whatever I'm saying here is that I'm keeping the productivity thing in mind. Now the 600 panels are okay. If you don't have the budget, if you don't have the money to you wanna spend, okay, fine. 
it's, it's a fine monitor. It, it will do the job. If you're looking straight to the monitor, it's fine. It's not a problematic. But once you look it from a corner, the brightness isn't that high anyway. And on top of that, those IPS glows will just make the image look really dull. But if what if you want to buy something really good? Then there are two options. One is the 800 series panel and one that is the 900 series panels. The 900 series panels are mostly reserved for the 4K monitors and the 800 series panels you can find somewhere like the 2K monitors and all those stuff. So these are the two panels that you can consider at any given moment. These are the nano IPS panels. So what is the nano IPS panel? Well, it is much better than the IPS while not being something like OLED or, or mini LED, let's call it. So now this monitor actually comes with factory calibrated color. So the best part about it is that there is a mode called sRGB, which is switch to that mode, bam, everything is color accurate. Now in terms of specs, I have to say a few things like it supports 144 hertz. There is no overclocking feature inbuilt. This monitor also comes with DCI-P3 98%. So that is actually great. It also has one millisecond response time, gray to gray. So, I mean, don't consider one millisecond. I mean, okay, fine. I know I'm not a gamer guy, but I the one millisecond is kind of like a marketing gimmick, let's call it. Those are on par with most of the standard IPS panels. So just, it's not bad, bro. It just, now there are tons of ports, uh, but they're mostly gaming focused. There is a DP port uh, to HDMI ports, but they, so if you're thinking of the upstream port or even the USB-C port or something like that, you, you don't have that thing. So if you want those options, then you have to go with the ultra fine series or even the Ergo series. That's where you're going to get it. Those are mostly like productivity monitors. So now on top of that, there is one other good thing. You can just move the joystick and you can control the brightness as well as uh, move it in the opposite direction from left to right to control the volumes um, and front to back to do the brightness. Now this is currently at like a 50% brightness. Um, it can go really bright. And for me, because I use it indoors, I, who uses on a monitor outside? But yeah, in cases like I do have a lot of lights and I do see quite a bit of reflection because this nano IPS panel doesn't really have as much of this matte texture as much as that one. I would personally say that this is actually much better. This is, it's somewhere between like the glossy panels and fully matte panels, somewhere in between. It, it does have a matte coating on top of it, but it is not as harsh as those panels. I mean, if I have to talk about one complaint, that would be probably this bottom bezel. I mean, there is no point in having that because the LG G P 950 don't even have that thing. So why here? I mean, it could have been much smaller, but overall that's thinner bezels all around. I think it's great. Now the peak brightness isn't that high, it's 350 nits around, so so even though they are claiming it has HD at 10 and all those stuff, but I wouldn't say that you have to trust them. I have used the HD effect, it kind of mimics the thing, but it's nowhere close to that, I mean, just, it doesn't make sense. I mean, for me, it's kind of like boosting the saturation, you know, how, it, it's not great, it's not a great experience. If you want to see proper HD content, then you definitely have to consider mini LED displays, or better go with OLED displays. I mean, those are really insanely cost. Now, a lot of people might be asking, does it have speakers? No, it doesn't have speakers. And I don't want that either. Like sometimes some people do want that because having an option is a good thing. And one of the things, do keep in mind, like if you have a desk that is at least this thick, then yeah, go for this monitor because you can mount this thing and it needs to have quite a bit of space, like as much as this much space, which is a little over like a four inch space you need. But for me, I have a very deep wide desk. So in that scenario, I need something that can go as far as I want and as close as I want. And this is something that just fulfills that thing in every possible way. I'm not on a monitor reviewer properly. There are many other channels that do much better than this one. I'm kind of like showing you what I just bought. But at the end of the day, I love this monitor. And if you love what you bought, I mean, what can be better than that? So yeah, that's about it. If you guys want to see more episodes like this, please hit the like button and definitely do subscribe. Also, visit my website, johndavid.com, link down below. It's for everything tech. You're going to get all these and more tech news way faster than these videos. Until the next episode, bye and take care.